By this part in your process, you probably realize that live paint is an easy and quick way to fill large uh, spaces, but it does have some limitations. Um, one being that in the live paint function, you can't change the opacity of your fill. So if you want something to be kind of transparent or translucent, even if you uh, bump up or down the opacity and try to paint, um, it does not register, it does not work. Um, another limitation is that you can't add multiple fills and then you can't play with blending modes with multiple fills. But there is an easy way um, to start with live paint and then be able to take that and go further without having to redo your entire painting process. First, take your magic wand tool and click on a path so that everything in your drawing is highlighted. Next, you'll go to Object, and then to Expand. You want to make sure that when you're expanding, the Object, Fill, and Stroke buttons are checked. I'll say OK. And I'm going to deselect everything by going Shift-Control-A. Now, if I use my Direct Selection tool, my uh, white arrow, which helps me highlight one area at a time, I can click an area I want to manipulate. Let's say I'll do the hair here. Um, and now I'm able to bring down the opacity if I want to. If I had my image, um, my actual photograph underneath here, that might look kind of cool. I don't on this one, so you can't really tell. Um, so that's an option. And uh, if we go to Window and then find our Appearance panel by clicking Appearance, you're able to add multiple strokes and multiple fills. Um, this is something we'll go over a little bit more if you take Design and Digital Art 2 while we're making patterns. Um, but it's a cool thing to know now. So it shows my fill here, and it shows that I don't have a stroke, and then gives me the option to add more fills. Um, from here, I can click. I can click this set of books to find Illustrator's preloaded uh, library of fills, so maybe I want to add a pattern into my hair. Whenever I click on these swatches, you're able to see the change on my image. So maybe I'll choose that since it kind of goes with uh, my shirt. And let's say I like this, but it's a little bit too intense. I can always come up here and change the opacity to make it blend in with the base layer now. And just like Photoshop, if you have more than one layer, order becomes important. Um, so I want this one to be on top of here. I can continue to add personalized strokes and fills uh, to the combination I already have. I'll do one more to explore the gradient feature. So I'll add a new fill and um, I'll click my library, go to gradients, and you can search a bunch of preset gradients that Illustrator has, or you can make your own gradient, um, which you've learned how to do in Illustrator and Photoshop. I've loaded this gradient here, um, and I like the colors that go with my piece. So uh, the gradient picker comes up and into view, and uh, I can always personalize this a little bit more. Let's say I want uh, this color to be the same color as my shirt. I can press I for the eyedropper, Oops, and double click here, and um, then choose that base color. Bring that down a little bit to more match my shirt. I can always click and add a new stop, or if I don't like that, I can click and drag the stop off for it to go away. Um, but I like this. I'm going to choose radial, um, so that changes the, the type of the gradient. And um, let's see here. Play around with a few other options. Maybe I wanted a little bit more purple here. Um, all right. I can also, if I want to play with my gradient even more, click the gradient tool over on the left hand toolbar. And here you're able to move the stops. I do not want that play around with where your gradient lies within your piece. I like that a little bit better. I'll then play with the opacity so that 
my other patterns show through and the gradient is a little bit more subtle. So maybe it looks like light is shining um, on one part of the hair. So there's lots that you can do uh, with the gradient editing tool and a lot that you can do with an appearance panel if you layer multiple um, strokes and fills. The last thing that I'll talk about in this demo is how to add personalized strokes. So the outsides of your shapes, how to change those. I'm going to use my direct selection tool to select that hair once again. And this time, instead of clicking Add New Fill, I'll click Add New Stroke. So I can choose the color here. Um, I can choose the point. So if I want my strokes to be thicker, uh, you make the point higher. You can also choose different kinds of lines. So if I go here, the Illustrator gives me some pretty basic uh, types of line quality. Maybe, let's say I want the color uh, to be one already found in my hair. I can change the color pretty easily. Um, but anytime you see these books, there's different kinds of libraries. So maybe I want my hair to have like a brush texture. I can choose that or go back to libraries. There's decorative brushes, image brushes, artistic brushes, let's do a paint brush. Choose this. Um, some brushes are thicker than others, so you would need to play with this stroke here. So I bring that down to 0.5. And I can always deselect to see what that looks like. So in conclusion, Starting with a live paint group um, is a quick and easy way to paint, but can only do so much. So through this process of using your magic wand tool, selecting everything, and then expanding your image, and then opening up the appearance panel, you're able to um, add multiple strokes and multiple fills to further customize your vector image in Illustrator.